I know before I said sometimes a fake graph is good enough. When it comes to sine of x and sine of 2x, I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful about the graph. I'm going to start by graphing y equals sine of x. And since I'm going from 0 to pi, I know that that's really sort of the first hump of our sine of x graph. Sine of 2x, that 2 changes the period for sine. And the way that I would find the period of this graph, that period would look like 2 pi divided by the coefficient in front of x, or 2 pi divided by 2. So that means that this that sine of 2x completes a full cycle between 0 and pi. We haven't changed the amplitude. There's still a 1 in front of that sign. So it's still going to get up to that same height. And this is about what our graph looks like. Because I asked us to find the area of the region bounded by the two graphs, we actually have a place where our top and bottom functions swap. In this first region, if I draw my arbitrary cross section in, that top function is y equals sine of 2x. So although I don't know what this value is yet, I know that between 0 and whatever that value is, my top function is sine of 2x, and my bottom function is sine of x. In the second part of our region here, if I draw an arbitrary cross section, I know that our top function is sine of x, and our bottom function is sine of 2x. So now I'd be going from whatever that value is to pi sine of x minus sine 2x. Now we need to come back and figure out what is that intersection point. I'm going to use the same technique that we used on the previous example, which is going to set the two y values equal to each other. Well, I don't think it's important to memorize all of the possible trig identities. I do think that there are a few that come in handy. Also, if you're working on your homework, if you were doing this in Desmos, you could probably zoom in and figure out what that was, or you'd have the trig identities on hand. Sine of 2x is a nice one, and sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. If I go to rearrange this, then I have a couple of options. One option is because sine of x showed up on both sides, I could divide both sides by sine of x. And that would be fine as long as sine of x was not equal to 0. Since the point we're looking at is clearly a place where sine x is not equal to 0, we should be fine to divide by sine x. Alternately, the better way to do this is to actually subtract the sine x over. So that's what I'm going to do. So if I subtract that sine x over, then I would be left with 0 is equal to 2 sine x cosine x minus sine of x. And now I can factor that sine of x out. Algebraically, that's the better way to do this. So I know these are going to intersect whenever sine of x is equal to 0. Well, sine x is equal to 0 at 0 and pi. Great, we already found those two points on our graph or when 2 cosine x is equal to negative 1. This is the same as saying that cosine of x must be equal to 1 half. 
So now we're looking for what's the angle where cosine is equal to one half. I'm gonna draw myself a quick triangle. That's two and that's one and that's square root of three. And that is a pi over three and a pi over six. So it looks to me like cosine is equal to a half at pi over three. And that is our missing angle to plug in here. 